All right, so we're over here in the Washington Township build. Final day, everything's all up and running. Water's crystal clear. A nice footbridge here. Boom. Look at that waterfall. Isn't that gorgeous? It's about a four foot waterfall right there. All right, so I'm sitting here with the homeowner, Jason. This is his first time seeing it. Love it. Let's see what Jason has to say. Absolutely love it. The guys did a fantastic job. Now you've owned a pond before. Yep. This is um, this is your new house. Yep. And what are some of the things as a pond owner in the past, what have you learned for this pond going forward? Well, I'm going to try and stop putting so many chemicals in it, per Dan's uh, advice. Algicides and barleys and different uh, different sorts of stuff, and it just kept getting string algae and was always looking like uh, not so good. So I'm going to follow their advice this time, and hopefully we get a nice clear pond that the koi are going to love to swim around in. Awesome. We can watch them swim around at night, feed them. Awesome. And you know that we're here for you anytime. It's just a phone call or a text that, you know, we'll be here for them to, you know, offer any advice whatsoever that we can. So going back to, uh, or playing off of uh, what Jason just said, adding too many chemicals, uh, we typically like to just use beneficial bacteria and we also rely on heavily on plants. So let me turn the camera around, tell you what I mean by plants. So right here we've got, Jason has already put in some um, forget-me-not here. Now this is in the stream. Plants that are in a stream will pick up 85 to 95 percent of the nutrient load that are in a pond versus plants that are down here in a pond, they'll take maybe two to three percent of the nutrient load. In a stream, 100 percent of that water is always going through the root systems. So those plants that are in a stream are now filtering plants versus plants that are in a pond, they'll, they'll take up a very lower percentage of those nutrients. Those nutrients, remember, are the same nutrients that are feeding algae too. So we're doing a balancing act in a pond. And a balancing act is to get the uh, ecosystem to mimic what Mother Nature is doing. So we want the biofilm, that, that sliminess on those rocks, um, that's, that's a form of algae. We want that so that way we can have crystal clear water. We get rid of it by using things like Jason mentioned, algicides. Algicides, um, they kill algae very effectively. It's a knee-jerk reaction to something happening in your pond. Um, my go-to first is, A, do we have a leak in our pond? If we have a leak, beneficial bacteria don't get a chance to colonize where we want them to, and they're always leaking out. Um, if we've got surface water runoff, like say down a hill or something and we've got fertilization fertilizers leaching into a stream or into a pond that can contribute to uh, a big algae bloom if we've got a lot of rainwater in one season that can contribute a lot to the um, the amount of algae that we have in a pond because we have higher nutrient levels in a pond when we when it rains a lot so not all ponds are created equal. Not every season is, is the same. So um, we take it one day at a time. Whenever it rains, we like to double up on our bacterias. Our bacterias that we put in today are not for today. They're for tomorrow. They don't get activated for, a, it takes four to six weeks for bacteria to be in a system to become active and start pulling nutrients away and competing with algae. Now here we have some pickerel rush in a pond. It's aesthetic looking. Um, it's taking some nutrients out. It'll take more nutrients out in this location here because this water in the pond is passing through the root zone. It's not going to take 85 to 95 percent of the nutrient load away from algae, but it's going to do a lot better because the water is rushing right here down into the skimmer. Now what he's got here is a little feeding ring so the food will stay there instead of floating right into the skimmer. And remember, 
whenever you're feeding your fish, only eat, only feed them what they'll eat in two to three minutes. Feed, as, feed them as many times as you want, but we don't need the, we don't need koi chasing it into the uh, skimmer, and we don't want it rotting there because if it rots, what does it do? Turns into nutrients for algae. So, what were some of the biggest issues on this project? Uh, I think the biggest one for sure was being between the two patios. There was probably 18 inches of base material that we had to dig through and try and shape this out. Um, made it rather difficult. Um, no matter how much underlayment or anything was behind the liner, once we put started rocking it in, it just the uh, base material is just cutting through it. So had some patching to do, which happens. But so you heard it from the foreman, Brian, um, digging conditions and yeah, no. the fact that there was so much um, heavy gravel, about 18 inches yeah. thick underneath the, um, or between the two patios. Um, the other issue was uh, groundwater that had come up underneath the, uh, at, at the two or three foot depth that we had on this pond. So we did end up putting a drain that leads, so we did end up putting a drain that leads down this way. Um, it's a field drain, it's got holes in it, water, and this is all underneath the liner. The water goes into that drain, then into a sump that leads out and away from the pond. By having ground water, it, it creates hydrostatic pressure underneath the liner, lifts up the liner from the bottom, pulls down from the sides. That could be a nightmare if this little sump pump was not put in. So, here's a wrap on the job. There's your dream team right there that created it. This pond is gonna look absolutely gorgeous once some plantings start filling up both sides. And, I mean, it's a nice place to have a pond. This is the ultimate backyard. Hot tub here, upper deck here, walk out, lower level here. It's just a party place. Screened in porch. Yeah, it was supposed to be a man cave and the kids kind of commandeered it. We'll go up and take a look at that in a second. Look at this. Just a screened in room. Is this your room, bud? Got a fan for circulation. This is the ultimate playroom. I love this. I wish I had something like this when I was a kid. It was supposed to be daddy's room, but the kids took it over. Oh. Got a nice view of the waterfall down below. It's a five and a half foot drop right here. Two foot drop here. And another one foot drop down at the bottom. That goes down into a pond. 24 inches deep on this side, 33 to 36 inches deep on this side. It's gonna be a healthy home for some koi. So that's it. Let us know what you think on this project. Uh, if you haven't done so before, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next job. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.